In November 1995, while an overwhelming international outcry mounted against the execution of the Ogoni and Mossop leader, Ken Sarowiwa and his colleagues, defiant military dictator General Sani Abaja, backed by a small group of military officers, convinced themselves that executing them swiftly was the best way to resolve the Ogoni unrest once and for all and to make it clear to Nigerians and the international community that the authoritarian regime was no pushover. In this video, we will bring to your view a sap from the classified high-level military council meeting in which the decision to execute Ken Sarowiwa and his associates was taken on November 8, 1995. Welcome to his pre media in-depth history. According to a recording of the final meeting during which the decision to hang Mr. Ken Sarowiwa and eight of his associates was made, two days before the execution, General Sani Abacha told members of the regime's highest decision-making body, the Provisional Ruling Council PRC, that the activists deserve no sympathy and that hanging them would subdue further discontent and demonstrate to the world that the regime was bold and courageous. Abacha wanted the sentence and the subsequent execution to serve as a lesson to others who may not any plan to further disrupt his regime. The document is quoted to have said, he was of the view that no sympathy should be shown on the convict so that the sentence would be a lesson to everybody. He stated that the Ogoni issue had lingered on for a very long time and should be addressed once and for all. The former head of state said, Mr. Sarawa was a foreign agent used to destabilize Nigeria and a separatist who cloaked himself as an environmental activist but whose true intention was to split the country and subvert its authority. Members of the PRC at the time were General Sani Abaja, Major General Patrick Aziza, Minister of Communication, Major General Tajuddin Olariwaju, General Officer Commanding, General Abdul Salami Abubakar, Chief of Defense Staff, Lieutenant General Oladi Podia, Chief of General Staff, Major General Victor Malu, General Officer Commanding, Ibrahim Kumasi, Inspector General of Police, Mike Ahigbe, Chief of Naval Staff, Major General Ishaya Rizibamiyi, Chief of Army Staff, Nsikak Edok, Chief of Air Staff, Lieutenant General Jeremiah Useni, Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, and Michael Agbamuche, Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice. If you find this video valuable and would like to see more in-depth history videos, consider subscribing and boop the like button as well. Thank you. Mr. Sarowiwa, a respected writer, activist and environmental campaigner had been sentenced to death by a military tribunal set up by the regime. He was accused of masterminding the killing of four prominent Ogoni leaders. Sarowiwa vehemently denied the charges. The charges were widely viewed as framed to silence Sarowiwa's campaign against the exploitation and degradation of the Ogoni land by international oil majors, especially Shell BP. However, while a global campaign to block the implementation of the tribunal's verdict intensified, the regime on November 10, 1995, two days after its meeting, staged a fast-track execution of the ruling. The convicts were gruesomely hanged despite repeated pleas from different quarters. Others killed along with Ken Sarowiwa were Satude Dobi, Nodu Ewo, Daniel Boko, Paul Levera, Felix Nueti, Barebo Bera, Barinem Kiobel, and John Pune. The killing sparked international outrage. While the European Union and the United States placed economic embargo and other restrictions on the country, the Commonwealth of Nations promptly suspended the country from its fold. Shell at the center of the unrest was accused of complicity in the killings, with allegations he sponsored the military junta's onslaught on Ogoni land. The company denied the allegations, despite testimony stating otherwise, and a $15.5 million out-of-court settlement it agreed in favor of the families of the victims in 2009. Shell said the payment was not a concession of guilt, but a gesture of peace. The minutes of the military council meeting preceding the executions, a four-page memo kept secret for years, documents the behind-the-scenes moves at the highest echelon of the Abacha's regime's decision-making organ, 
as it hurried through with the execution. The details shed light on how the junta, accused of right violations and fierce brutality, considered an unprecedented domestic international course to suspend the killings. Besides deciding to forge ahead with the execution, the document indicates that the PRC offered frantic justifications for the killings, planned a broad state-sponsored propaganda against the movement for the survival of the Ogoni people, considered the proscription of Mosul and how to further divide the group's ranks and neutralize its membership. Mr. Abacha chaired the meeting on November 8, 1995 and led junta officials through a deliberation that sought a speedy implementation of the death sentence which was implemented less than 48 hours after the meeting. While a global campaign pushed for the ruling of the Kangaroo Tribunal to be shelved, the minutes shows the 11 member PRC never considered backing down. Instead, junta officials warned that a reversal would portray weakness. They accused the international community of double standards, choosing for economic reasons to look the other way when similar state decisions were taken elsewhere. The council was advised not to yield to pressure from the West, championed by the United States of America. The council was reminded that the Arab countries visited crimes with measurable punishment for which the West saw nothing wrong because of their economic interests. It was therefore advocated that minimum time be wasted between the council's decision and its implementation. The junta described Mr. Sarawiwa's alleged crime as heinous and accused the media of attempting to whip up sentiment for him and the other accused. It was cautioned that if members of paddled, the administration would be regarded as a weakling, the document stated. With the backing of the council members, General Abacha then declared that anyone who killed his fellow citizens did not deserve to live. Abacha believed the Ogonis were asking for too much and were ungrateful for sizable federal investment located in the area, possibly making reference to One Port and LMA Petrochemicals, both located near Port Harcourt. Despite the extensive considerations, barely did the meeting broke counter-opinion not in line with General Abacha's, a suggestion by an unnamed member that in future such trials should be conducted by a civil court not to unnecessarily reel the international community was promptly overruled by General Sani Abacha, who spoke of his preference for military tribunals for its speed. The document is quoted to have said, on whether the military tribunal should be replaced with civil court, he expressed preference for military tribunals which, he said, consider and decide cases with dispatch, the minute said of General Baja. The tribunal that convicted Mr. Sarawiwa turned out among us the most controversial, headed by Justice Ibrahim Arthur, who would later become Chief Judge of the Federal High Court. The panel delivered a speedy but severely criticized verdict on October 31, 1995, barely nine months after it was convened. The panel faced severe criticism for alleged high-handedness, prompting defense lawyers led by late Ghani Fayomi, Femi Falana, and Olisa Agbakoba to stand down after accusing the outer lay tribunal of violating all known judicial ethics and rules. Mr. Alta then a mid-career judge turned down two key requests from the defense team, namely two weeks of access to Mr. Sarawiwa and the rest, having been denied access to their counsel and an order transferring the accused from a military court in Port Harcourt to a civil prison. Mr. Sarawiwa and his colleagues were condemned to death without legal representations. In years to come, Mr. Alta has risen to become a chief judge while the lead prosecutor Joseph Daudu became the chairman of the Nigerian Bar Association. As the military top brass made on November 8, 1995, the severely criticized tribunal came up for a decent dose of praise for its painstaking consideration of the file. Mr. Sarawiwa's campaign started decades earlier but reached its peak in the 1990s as he struggled to draw international and national attention to the deprivations the Ogonis faced while Shell and American firms Chevron degraded their land and carted away billions of petrol dollars. 
arrested and released several times, the crisis took a fatal twist after four Ogoni leaders accused of selling out to the government and Shell were mobbed to death by some youths. Mr. Sarowiwa denied the youths carried out his orders, a claim countered by the military government which before then had endured devastating restiveness the activists led to cripple production. In turn, the military was accused of staging the killing as a way of eliminating the activists. As the Abacha regime faced the Sarowiwa episode in 1995, it had its hands full with a coup d'etat case in which former President Olusegun Obasanjo and others were indicted. Amid international condemnation against the coup indictment, an allegation also viewed as staged to hunt opponent, the regime backed down from its initial plan to execute the alleged coup plotters. Interestingly, the regime later regretted the compassion shown to the coup plotters and believed it acted feebly. According to the document, the Sarowiwa case presented an opportunity to right that wrong and prove a strong point. The minute said, Council was reminded that the government's decision on the plotters had sent wrong signals to the generality of Nigerians and that the current case should be used to correct that wrong impression. That concern turned up repeatedly in the meeting, according to the recording, with some members appearing to compare the relatively mild response to the alleged coup plotters to the draconian reaction that trailed the Ogoni's case. General Bacha laid that concern to rest as the meeting drew to a close, declaring that while the Ogoni's case was a premeditated murder, the alleged coup plotters had yet to carry out their plot. In a brief humane consideration, the council considered that the trouble in Ogoni land was a result of years of neglect, failure and pent-up anger. But members also swiftly argued that agitators like Mr. Sarowiwa were mischief makers who cashed in on the genuine grievances to seek selfish motives. The minute read, it was therefore not surprising that a few mischievous individuals could exploit the situation for their selfish end. Council was therefore urged to approve the judgment of the tribunal and ensure its expeditious implementation. The judgment was approved and Mr. Sarowiwa was executed by hanging less than 48 hours after the meeting on November 10, 1995. Click this video for more on the brutal regime of General Sani Abacha. If you enjoyed this video, kindly book the like button and subscribe as well. My name is Gabriel. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.